Good afternoon all, uh, quite late in the afternoon actually. So this is going to be a largely artificially lit post bag. Right, let's start with this one. Um, yes, I'd much prefer to be doing this with proper natural light coming through the window, but uh, circumstances are preventing me from uh, doing that really at the moment. So I plow on. Okay, two things wrapped up in bubble wrap. Right, this one is, well, they're opto-isolators, aren't they? I mean, whenever you see dual inline packages that only have four pins, uh, apart from, I suppose, bridge rectifiers, these pretty much have to be optos, don't they? So uh, in the past, I've always bought uh, these opto-isolators. These are Sharp PC817s. Uh, I think I've also bought EL817s, but they're essentially the same. Now these are different. These are, uh, well, they're just marked 2501. Let's take a look at the eBay listing. So these are 10 pieces PS2501-1 or NEC2501, uh, DIP4, four, four pin, photocoupler, uh, 10 pieces for 99 cents. So they're pretty much the same price as the PC817s. Free shipping, and these came from Survey 2014. So the burning question for me is, are these 2501s going to be any faster than the Sharp uh, PC817s? Because the problem for me with these is that um, on my MOSFET driver, running at sort of, I don't know, 15, 20, 30 kilohertz, these things are just a tad slow and the edges are just a bit rounded off and I want nice clean transitions. Now, I'm not really expecting there to be a huge amount of difference because as I understand it, there's an inherent problem with fast switching of the opto transistor in opto isolators. And that is apparently that the opto transistor has a very large base area. Normal transistors have a very tiny base but these have a very large base because of course it's got to be light sensitive and it's having to pick up the light from the infrared emitter LED on the left hand side here. And because it has a very large physical area, it has a large capacitance and that's why you get these slow rise and fall times on the switching edges. So I can't believe that NEC are going to be able to miraculously overcome that problem. But I mean, even if they were just a tiny bit better it would be well better. So I will build another one of these, uh, what I call my decoy, my dual complementary opto isolator MOSFET driver. I'll build another one of these with these uh, NEC opto isolators um, just to see whether it's any better, any faster. Right in the other package are these and you can kind of see what they are uh, already. Oh, that's more than 10 pieces. How many pieces was this? I can't remember. But uh, yeah, quite a lot of these eight pin uh, female headers. There's the female bit there, but they're also long pin. So the idea is that you solder them into a circuit board. I think these uh, are often used on Arduinos. You solder them into the printed circuit board and then the whole thing can be stacked. Well, I want these for another type of printed circuit board. Uh, right, so before we look at that, let's just take a look at how well these stack. They just kind of plug into each other like that. Now there is a, a gap in there, obviously, because we need the thickness of the printed circuit board and also the um, the meniscuses, the menisci, are they? <laughs> meniscuses of uh, the solder that's going to sort of run up the pin a bit and then run back down in, in a sort of meniscus shape. Uh, when you solder these onto those printed circuit boards, so they stack like that. Eight pin I wanted for a very specific reason. Oops, I seem to have missed with two of the pins there. And these are 10 pieces. Eight pin female tall stackable header, connector socket for Arduino shield. Um, I must have bought two of these because I've got 20 of them but you get 10 pieces for 99 cents, free shipping. And these also came from Survey 2014. So moving swiftly along, uh, this one, which is related, I think, I hope if I've identified the uh, package correctly. 
Aha, uh -huh, yes. These are uh, SOP to dip. Nothing else in there, I don't think. SOP to dip adapter boards. Uh, right, this is a bit queer. Uh, some of them are end to end like that, and some of them are side to side like that. Why would they have broken them? I mean, they're identical, aren't they? But why would they have broken them in that strange way? And this one's really annoying. I bet this is one of these stickers that just refuses to come off. Why would they stick that right over the top of where I'm going to have to solder? No, it's not too bad, actually. No, it's one of these stickers where the paper peels away. So I'm going to have to work it from all four corners. How annoying. Right, what we have here are two different types of board. Uh, there's the 20 pin. Now these are double sided, which is quite interesting. Uh, we've got this side, which takes um, a SOP 20 pin. The pin pitch is 1.27 millimeters, otherwise known as a 20th of an inch. And on the other side, it's an S SOP 20 pin with a 0.65 millimeter pitch. Now I'm not sure whether that has an imperial equivalent. It may be metric uh, from the design stage. Uh, so that's the fine pitch S SOP and this is the much coarser pitch SOP. Uh, so those are the 20 pins. These are very similar, but they're for 16 pin. It's the same thing S SOP 0.65 millimeter and SOP 1.27 millimeter. Now look how well, <laughs> how well thought out this is. Um, these stackable headers fit into the uh, eight holes down one side of this board. That I can then solder and that plugs into there. And we have stackable chips, stackable what effectively become dual in line, but with a six tenths or 600 mils spacing across there rather than the standard uh, 300 mils. Actually, some chips are 600 mil, aren't they? Oh, I must look at that. Ah, right. Now this is interesting. These 20 pin ones are clearly uh, 600 mil spacing across the board because this uh, 600 mils or six tenths of an inch or that would be, uh, how many thou would that be? I can't think at the moment, but that's 600 mils across there. But these ones aren't. These are 500 mils because that chip does not fit across the width of that particular board. Uh, so you can kind of see where I'm going with this. Um, this is going to be for vertically stacked towers, columns, of chips um, which largely have their pins all in parallel. Uh, I can't quite remember. Yeah, this was this is this was buses, wasn't it? Now some of these pins are obviously going to have to be bent out so that they don't uh, sit in the bus because there's no point attaching chips together with all 16 of their pins in parallel. That <laughs> wouldn't really achieve a lot. But yes, this is for my vertical towers of integrated circuits. So uh, this item, now I've got a funny feeling I've shown the 16 pin one of these before on a previous post bag. So there's not much point doing that again, but this is the listing uh, that I bought them from. We've got SOP8 to SOP48. And if I click on this first image, you can see all the different types from eight pin uh, right up to that one in the bottom right hand corner, which is 48 pin uh, alarmingly. So in this um, select box, we've got SOP8, 14, 16, 20. You can't see this, I'm afraid. 28, 32 and 48. In the amounts, we've got 50 pieces, 20, 100, 10, 5, 2 and 1. So mm, I need to select something to get the price. So I'll do the SOP 20 and I'll select 10 pieces because is that what I bought? 10 pieces? I think it probably is. Uh, so that's coming up. What if I select 20 pieces? 189. Okay, let's do the 20 pieces. Uh, did I buy 20 pieces? No, I bought 10 pieces. Let's do that. Uh, just 99 cents for 10 pieces of the SOP 20 variety. Uh, free shipping. These came from Alice 110 1983. Might as well just do the 16 since I did actually buy some. Well, 10 pieces of that is also 99 cents. 20 pieces, 
$1.23. And uh, finally, Cyril. I suppose this should really be the last one. And finally, Esther. We have this. Chippies. So clearly uh, 10 of one integrated circuit and just five of another. I think these are the same size. They are uh, 16 bin chips, I do believe, and therefore they will fit onto the 16 pin boards, these smaller ones. Let's see how well that works. So these are um, SOP size. So I want the SOP side of that board. Well, that's one way to get it out. Uh, right, tweezers. Uh, these tweezers are, of course, anti-static. Yeah, right. They probably are reasonably anti-static. OK, so let's pop this on this board and see how well that's going to fit. Oh, this doesn't leave you a lot of space to solder it. Actually, it doesn't leave you any space to solder it. That kind of overhangs, really, both sides. Let's get a little bit closer in on that. Actually, of course, I haven't said what these chips are, have I? Well, one of them is clearly a 74HC283A, and that is uh, an adder chip. I think it's got two adders in one chip, I seem to remember. And this one is a 74HC153A, so that's a multiplexer or data selector. Whoops, I'm quite close to the uh, top of my bench. But yeah, that doesn't really fit, does it? Because if I slide that that way so that you can see the, the top pins are right at the edges of the pads, there's a fair way to slide it before the bottom pins are right at the edges of the pad. So the pads haven't really been made long enough. I think you can get um, skinnier versions of these. But yeah, that doesn't really fit, does it? I mean, I'm sure it will solder on if I possibly pre-tin the pads. But that's not very good, is it? It doesn't really fit. So it's going to be a bit of a bodge. Do you know, I'm thinking I might go with um, solder paste and reflow with a hot air gun, one of those little miniature hot air guns with a very fine nozzle for these, rather than trying to solder them with a soldering iron. I mean, it wouldn't be so bad if you had a lot of this pad area showing up, so you could sort of slide the soldering iron up to the pin. But with this chip kind of completely overlapping uh, those pads, that's going to be a real pig. So yeah, I might get some solder paste in one of those little um, reflow hot air guns for these and, and then they'll kind of sort of centralize and find their own position uh, if i just sort of generally heat them i hope i can do that enough to get the solder to melt but not to fry the chip should be fine that's how it's done these days and uh, so yeah the whole point of all this is to uh, mount these chips i think the data selectors are going to be eight chips high <laughs> that's going to be quite a tall thing isn't it uh, eight chips high with a couple of adders uh, stuck on the top, quite possibly, or maybe the adders will be on another tower. Uh, yeah, chips soldered onto these little boards, and then the boards stacked using these headers, which does, of course, mean that um, I can disassemble the whole thing if I need to. That's pretty much what this stuff is for. Now, just briefly, the uh, 74HC283, is a 4-bit binary full adder with fast carry, adds two binary numbers, uh, full internal look ahead for internal um, look ahead carry so that it's virtually instantaneous, fast ripple carry which uh, goes between one chip and the next chip, that's a bit slower but uh, they've said it's fast. Uh, so that's the uh, HC283 and the 74HC153 is a dual, there are two in each package, four input data selector multiplexer. And you saw me recently use uh, these as, well, configurable logic gates. So by um, changing the pattern on the four input lines, uh, which four input lines? The data input lines, I think, I could turn this into one of 16 
logic gates uh, and or NAND nor uh, exclusive or exclusive nor and some other really silly ones um, and of course all this stuff is of course for my 8-bit uh, breadboard computer and so these items are uh, five pieces of the 74HC283 SOP16 uh, it says these are Toshiba CMOS digital integrated circuit it doesn't actually say that it's a four bit adder but it is uh, five pieces for four dollars fifty nine and these came from Galaxy Electronics 2015 and we have ten pieces of the 74HC153A again SOP16 uh, dual four channel multiplexer with three state output I don't think I'll be using the three state output I'll just permanently enable that. Uh, 10 pieces for $3.85, free shipping. And again, this came from Galaxy Electronics 2015. And so these are today's post bag items. Uh, most of this stuff is for the 8-bit breadboard computer. Everything, in fact, except the opto, opto isolators. Those are for my Muppet 2 uh, Buck Boost Converter Project. Big thanks again uh, to Patreon supporters who make my life a lot easier by allowing me to buy all this stuff which I show in the post bag videos. Uh, let's take a look at my Patreon page on Patreon. So here's my Patreon page. Julian is creating electronics videos. Uh, currently 349 patrons are supporting my YouTube channel. Uh, providing $516 per month. Now that means I've hit my first uh, funding goal, which is reached, and that was to uh, buy the stuff from eBay, buy these eBay purchases, and also to pay for a storage unit at Big Yellow so that I can store all the overspill junk that won't fit in <laughs> my workshop. Oh, and also, yeah, to keep the fan heater running because it does get quite cold when I turn the heating off during the winter. Um, let's see the next goal which is $1,024 uh, per month and that I've currently allocated for rooftop solar panels. I think it'd be quite cool to put uh, solar panels on the roof of my house. That will provide a very small feed-in tariff which is four pence currently per kilowatt hour and uh, as well as keeping that fan heater running and if the sun's out of course that will be free um, that will also provide another small source of revenue. So if you'd like to become one of those super excellent people who support me via Patreon, then uh, click this link here. Another couple of videos up here if you want to watch more of my stuff. And if you're not already subscribed to my channel, then uh, you can subscribe by clicking my face here. Cheerio.